information about the sort of current homeless situation in Cardiff, um, or sort of in Britain, um, a little bit about uh, sort of ways that um, homeless people are discriminated, um, and that can be done by the government, local authorities, or by the general public, um, and give a bit of a background about current homeless action, and then look at perhaps ways that we can uh, sort of uh, show support for our homeless community and uh, um, sort of. Uh, I would say the issues around the anti-homeless cages that have uh, been erected by the university. So um, I'm just going to ask a, sort of a couple of things, uh, questions first. Um, does anyone know how many homeless people there are in Britain at the moment? How are you going to count them if they're on the streets? Um, well, homelessness doesn't necessarily have to be people that are living on the streets. Homelessness can also be people that are uh, so being people that are sofa surfing. People that are in uh, temporary uh, accommodations such as bed and breakfast or hostels, um, and then you've got your sort of rough sleeping community as well. So uh, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be street, street homeless. Sorry, I don't forget me so much during uh, uh, hostels, somewhere like the home that you take is, you know, homeless. homeless first. Um, yeah, you're yeah. still clustered in need of housing, now. Yeah. Yes. Um, but tried to do a bit of research before this today, um, I couldn't actually find any figures. Um, England, Wales and Scotland have all got different ways of reporting it. And I, would, um, I was just saying that uh, once you get off, uh, off uh, into uh, a hostel, you might not be classed as homeless, you might be classed as in temporary accommodation. Um, anyone know how many rough sleepers there are in Cardiff? Okay, two, uh, in 2010, there was an estimate of 220 people, and that's just in Cardiff alone. Now, local authorities, they used to be obliged around October, November, to actually go out and do rough sleeping accounts, um, look in areas where uh, people were sleeping in shop doorways and known locations, and actually uh, sort of count rough sleepers. But then on top of that, they estimate that they should put another 60% on top of that. Last figures were in 2010, um, local authorities are no longer obliged to uh, do those counts and they're now um, able to get away with making rough, rough estimates. So there's no actual figures on how many people are sleeping rough. Now, I work in Caerphilly um, and people often say <coughs> about sort of homeless, as we were saying about rough sleepers, um, people sleeping in shop doorways. Um, now, um, and people sort of in the sort of city centre, under bridges, in subways, places like that. In Caerphilly we have quite a large rural homeless population and I'm aware of 15 people that are sleeping on Caerphilly Mountain at the moment, mm -hmm. um, pitching up in tents. There's people on the Taft Trail that are sleeping by the river. Um, also people uh, sleeping in Glumbrad Quarry, places like that. So it's difficult to actually gauge a number of this, uh, of how, uh, how big this problem is. As the local authorities aren't obliged to necessarily count this problem, then how can a local authority then make services adequate and suitable for, um, uh, for people uh, to engage in services and get the support that they need? Um, there's an estimate recently that uh, in London uh, there's been a, uh, over the last two years, a 75% increase in the number of rough sleepers. So the problem is getting drastically worse. Like um, that's just in the last two years. Um, London, they reckon, there's an estimated about 6,000 rough sleepers. Um, so if that continues at this rate, I mean, we're going to be looking at sort of tens of thousands, and uh, I don't know how many years down the line, perhaps we're looking at the hundreds of thousands. Um, at the moment, looking at the, try and the availability of actually trying to get people into housing, there are currently 5 million people on social housing waiting lists in this country. Um, we call this meeting today because of uh, the cages that have been put outside the uh, air vents, and that was an area that uh, um, a lot of homeless people in Perth, uh, a few homeless people in Cardiff, or a few rough sleepers were using. No, it's a place that they choose because it's a place of safety for them, or they consider it a place of safety. So it's a place of being dry. Absolutely. Um, it's a place where there's people more benefits. People have suffered incidents of violence there. Right. Unless around when you dry your stuff. Absolutely. Stay dry, and that's the most important thing. Yeah, and I think with any sort of person that's sleeping up, uh, keeping dry is one of the big priorities for them. Mm -hmm. 
people used to sleep in bus shelters at one point, at one time. Um, but now if you look at the bus shelters, they're all now the sides are actually raised off the ground, so like uh, cold air and men can actually get through the sides. There's no bench to sleep on anymore because the seats are sloping, so it makes it impossible to sleep on. Park benches around the city centre, you'll notice now they've all got armrests on them, so you can't actually lay yourself flat out on them. And uh, either than that, uh, some of them, like I said, are sloping, some of them are actually circular as well, so again, you can't lay them. Um, yeah, so you can't actually lie out flat on them. Certain places, there was a Tesco's in London that actually, uh, where one of these window sills was being used by rough sleepers, um, the uh, Tesco's in their infant of wisdom actually decided to put spikes on top of it. Um, again, uh, it's not going to be the most comfortable places to, uh, to stay. I was saying that one of the subways in Cardiff, which had a lot of homeless people, used to congregate, and then that cobbled, cobbled it over. So again, it's very, very uncomfortable. And we think there's a time to go in on. We're seeing far more punitive measures against what is uh, probably the most vulnerable and marginalised members <coughs> of the community. Sleeping by a warm air vent, um, like Noss says, it's a warm place. Yeah. Hypothermia is a big, big issue for a lot of homeless people. Where I work in Capilli, we have, um, like I said, we have had quite a few rough sleepers coming in, and we've got a couple of um, uh, people that used to serve in the forces. And one of the things that they're constantly saying to the rough sleepers is keep yourself dry, keep yourself dry. Some of the people there, they pull over wheelie beans and they empty the contents out to sleep inside of them. And, um, what they've been doing is putting their head in because they want to keep their head warm. It's actually far more important for them actually flip it around and actually to keep their feet warm because if it's hot, it's a lot easier to dry your head off than it is to dry your feet off. Like, the most so simple little things like that. Yeah, that's the most important. So, do we have time for comments? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's okay. Um, so we're starting to see more and more punitive measures coming in place. It's not just the sort of the practical measures that the uh, um, local authorities are starting to introduce. Um, we've got, I think it's a sort of general policy from government and local authorities. It's almost like a policy of social cleansing. Um, many people at home are uh, in a situation where they're claiming benefits. Now, to claim benefits, there was a time many, many years ago where you used to get a gyro check and you used to take it into a, a post office and they used to give you cash. You now have to have a bank account to have your benefits or a post office account to have your benefits paid into. To open a post office account or a uh, bank account, you need one form of ID, which most, a lot of rough sleepers aren't going to be able to have. Secondly, you need an address. So how can you claim benefits if you haven't got an address? You can't access any employment because <coughs> to access employment you need a bank account and address. So that's two stumbling blocks straight away. Okay? Um, people, on, uh, people that are homeless now, when they're actually going in to claim uh, things like job seekers allowance, um, if they're not deemed that they're looking hard enough for work, um, they can have their benefits sanctioned. If they're deemed uh, that they've been unemployed for too long, they can put, be put on work fair programmes where um, uh, attending somewhere like uh, Primark or um, working for Vodafone, it becomes compulsory. And if you don't attend, you get your benefits sanctioned. So you're looking at people that are going to be having it very, very difficult to get a routine, people that are going to be able to, uh, to try and find jobs, um, people that lead very, very chaotic lifestyles, trying to be engaged in a routine that's been imposed on them. Um, that's going to have time commitments, they're going to be, have to be uh, told to be presented in a certain way, and if they don't meet those requirements, then again, the benefits are sanctioned. Okay. Um, we look at social, uh, the sort of social policy at the moment, we've got a situation where uh, in the Thatcher years, um, the vast majority of our housing stock was sold off. Um, people were given the right to buy their council houses, now, that was a nice good bug for the government, but unfortunately, um, those, the money that was made off the back of that, local authorities were told that they weren't about to reinvest that into new houses. So, you're taking away the housing stock, but then you're not replacing it. Okay? Hence the increase in the number of people that are waiting lists and the number of people that are trying to access social housing at the moment. 
So you've got the, the sort of the current situation, the lack of housing, um, the lack of counselling of homeless people. Um, you've got the restrictions that are placed on pe uh, people paying, paying uh, uh, trying to access benefits. But then you've also got like the sort of uh, the architecture of the local authorities. Um, when people are sort of trying to access housing services, um, one of the first things that you have to prove is that you're not intentionally homeless. Now, people come homeless for a variety of reasons. That can be relationship breakdowns, it can be um, uh, family members um, evicting them, it could be um, that people are victims of abuse from their families as well. And again, you're looking at very, very vulnerable members, uh, people with uh, uh, population. Um, the ways, like I said, the onus is on the individual when you're actually applying for housing is to prove that they've not made themselves homeless intentionally. And one of the things that they might ask for is a letter from their landlords or from the person, uh, from their family members or friends who are accommodating them to actually say that they've been made homeless. Now, if they've been evicted because, or they've had to move out because that there's someone within the household who's uh, abusing them, how are they going to go back to that person to actually get a letter to state that that person's made them homeless? That's going to put them in a very precarious position as it is. Um, you've got um, stigma from the business community as well. Um, the back of the, uh, the Cardiff Homeless Campaign came off the back of um, the Olympics in 2012 when the uh, Cardiff Retail Partnership wanted to enforce a outdated vagrancy law that goes back to the 1800s, um, where people were sleeping in shop doorways. The local business community were concerned about the reputation of the city, um, and um, the, they said it was going to give the city a bad press if we got all these homeless people in there and it would impact on their trade. Um, now, one of the people who called uh, the, actually um, called for this law to be imposed was a jeweller that's selling plenty of gold and spent, uh, um, obviously his market is going to be sort of quite a um, wealthy uh, population. It's going to be the sort of higher social demographic. Um, a Cardiff Homeless Camp um, Homeless Action came off the back of this and uh, it was uh, we called a meeting in Bean Park. Um, it was just an open forum. Um, there's quite a way to think it was about sort of 60 people attending that meeting and the son of the shopkeeper attended the meeting and he said that he was misquoted in the press about actually uh, um, calling for this law to, uh, to be enacted. Um, going back to the press, uh, we had a verbatim report on it and it did, he did actually call for this law to be invoked. So, what we decided to do, we actually decided to do some direct action and I think this is what I want to sort of come to uh, today is to talk about how we can start sort of combating this. Um, we actually decided to uh, sort of sit outside his shop in ourselves and sort of people turned up with sleeping bags, um, raising awareness of the local shoppers. We had free food outside for homeless people. We had a, um, we made a bit of a fun event as well. We had the, there was, uh, some people juggling there and a couple of people playing guitar and music as well. So making it fun and sort of raising awareness of uh, the campaign. From what I gathered, there wasn't anyone actually. I know, um, uh, the, uh, the police were actually sort of moving people on and they were sort of uh, sleeping in shop and doorways. There wasn't anyone actually arrested and there weren't any um, uh, antisocial behaviour orders actually enacted on anyone as a result of that. So there was a sort of positive outcome from that. The issue of the cages that we've got at the moment, um, I suppose one of the things that we wanted to do today was to look at ways that we could uh, sort of uh, take this forward. And uh, I'm just wondering, is that, um, has anyone actually sort of contacted the university and asked for sort of reasons as why those, these cages have been installed yet? Yeah. Uh, I sent them in there this morning. I'd like to do a uh, vice chancellor, so I'm just uh, the deputy vice chancellor, that happens to be the uh, person in charge of operation or something like that. Okay. And that is a good one, I've been checking the email, so I haven't got any response. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's someone says because there's like an area that bent, what's that? Yeah, bent. Isn't that what comes from the labs? And there's apparently like a low level of like that's some dangerous chemicals in there. Yeah, apparently, in the article, yeah, well, apparently it's okay to walk past it for like long exposure, it's dangerous. But I've also talked to someone who's 
at home, he was researching to the homeless and housing in Cardiff. And he said that he's, he's been talking to security a lot, like informally. And he's, as far as he understands it, it's because a new head of security started. And she's much more tough on things like that than the previous heads of security, who's more, who's more for like, just more relaxed about it. Security guards like, go and talk to the homeless people there, all like, you know, like the mad bit, but it's not over the summer, so since she joined. Yeah, the Hibs in the Social Student Society sent an email uh, a few days ago and I haven't got the response on the British right, Council. Okay. So we requested this information but now it's had an actual direct response um, from the Dean of the Vice Chancellor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now one of the things that we've, um, uh, that's been reported in the press, and this has actually gone sort of quite national and independent and uh, dare I say the Daily Mail have actually sort of reported on this. Um, and one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons that they're um, saying is that it's due to carbon monoxide emissions. Now, my perception of this, and I don't know whether everyone would agree with me, but if it's a vent, it's actually dis uh, there's going to be dispersing air. So how much carbon monoxide is actually going to be sort of actually sort of staying within that area? I can understand the risks around carbon monoxide in the home if you've got sort of dodgy boilers because you're in an enclosed environment. That's a well ventilated area, and the fact that it is a vent, it's going to be blowing the air out and dispersing any carbon monoxide. My other concern is that if, uh, or the other uh, sort of counter argument is that if that's a safety issue, um, how does that balance against the issue of hypothermia that someone might face if they're um, freezing wet, uh, freezing cold and wet um, in the middle of winter? Okay. Um, so we, we, we've had a lack of response. I mean, again, that could be classed as a sort of uh, way of discriminating that, uh, or discrimination that the university isn't actually prepared to um, make a statement um, on this issue in, its, in itself. Uh, sorry, uh, the university may not uh, respond and may not have been ready for, to respond to the community, but uh, was ready available to uh, come and make uh, a change. In, in their construction, right. and I have this issue with this university and the student union that every time they decide to do something, things are obscure, they are not clear. Right. When you have an idea, like I have an idea, uh, I want to make the university safe uh, for health reasons, for reputation, for anything, there is a certain procedure. You don't go from A to Z. Right. But I have seen that probably, I don't know, within their committees or probably within their staff, they're taking decisions without going forward and without, at the same time, in a democratic manner, uh, report everything online, at yeah. least. So we all know what's going on. Right. As, uh, can I just uh, quick show of hands? How many people are actually students at this university? Okay, the vast majority. Um, was anyone actually consulted about these uh, about these cages? Mm -hmm. no? yeah, and I want to say as well, but I'm the ethical and environmental officer in the student union. Do I want it? Uh, can you speak? The ethical and environmental officer. Which oh, is, okay, uh, good. I'm a student, okay. I do it like, alongside my study. I want to mm -hmm. represent the student. Good. But I wasn't told this. Right. Or like, like just, there's, there's a lot of examples like that where we're not told things are going on. Right. Like, in, in, in the student's union as well. Like on my first day, in my first meeting, I was this, in this job, or whatever you call it. Um, the president of the student's union came in with a Starbucks mug and it's like, with a coffee, like, oh, there's a Starbucks downstairs now. And I was like, what? Right. <laughs> I'm not okay. a Starbucks downstairs. So, like, we're not told the things. Right, okay. So things are going, even things are going, that's sort of private tender. Yeah, exactly. Like, on that, like, okay. And that's um, in the student's union, but like, not, not the right. private. And um, does the student union actually sort of stand on a platform that is uh, supposed to be democratically run? Yeah, yes, yeah, as well. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, no, uh, this is your opinion. We have to ask a majority of people because I've been a student here. I'm not able to continue my studies because of several issues with my professor uh, and the student union that drove me down to homelessness, right, okay. losing my benefits, and uh, a very serious issue with my health, because if you sleep well, you feel healthy. Oh, absolutely. But if you right. have 40, 40, 42 nights within five months, haven't slept at all, or uh, have irregular rhythm, as you know, 
Is you're you're collapsing your nervous system. There's a direct on. there's a direct correlation between uh, regular sleep patterns and mental health. Yes. Day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we have to be uh, because I, I I must say your communication skills are very clear, and uh, um, that's why I asked the first question: How can we count? And you yeah. said there isn't one type of homelessness. It's no. a diverse issue, and yeah. it touches a little bit of everybody. Yeah. Um, I think there are certain ways and certain certain things where people are sort of taking things into their own hands and I'm, you know, I'm just going to give you examples of how you act on this, it's going to be your decision, um, but uh, certainly with the homeless spikes um, in uh, outside Tesco's, um, there were two recommendations, one where the spikes are on the ground, if people actually put some sort of solid board over the top of it, it could raise them off the ground and actually keep them off, off a wet floor. Um, and it could actually essentially provide um, uh, extra insulation. So using something like that to your advantage. There was a group of activists actually went in in one set of homeless spikes and just went in a concrete with over a lot of it and leveled them out, right? Okay. Removal of the cages, I'm not going to comment on that. It's a potential option. Okay. Um, Places in Canada, what they've done there, where they've got park benches, um, where we were saying like our park benches seem to be sort of anti homeless benches, what they've done in Canada is where you've got the sort of bench like that and you've got the back on it. They've got a wooden board at the back and it's actually got a message on it that's uh, uh, ultraviolet light reactive. So that on the, on the side it says uh, during the day this is a bench. But then in the night when the light changes it actually glows up and it says this is a shelter. And that back part of the bench actually flips up and clips up, so actually someone could actually sleep on the bench and have a warm cover over themselves as well. So there are practical solutions. Could we go around doing that? I think if so, as soon as we start putting them up, the local authority would sort of take them down again. Like, but I mean, there, there are measures that, the, uh, that in effect the local authority could potentially be doing to actually support um, uh, this community rather than continue to, uh, continue to marginalise them and uh, continue to exclude them. I think a lot of this sort of ties in with the sort of wider government agenda as well, and it's not just necessarily um, <coughs> that, that, that question whether this government has actually got a sort of policy of social cleansing in general, um, the sort of attack on the sort of poor at the moment, um, the vast majority of people claiming housing benefit, I think 95% of people are claiming housing benefit at the moment are actually in work. Um, you've had the introduction of the spare, uh, introduction of the spare room uh, subsidy or the bedroom tax where people have been in houses their local authority houses for the sort of 30 odd years, it's been their family home. Um, their children might have grown up and moved out where they're, um, they've now lost their jobs early or they've had to be uh, forced to take early retirement due to ill health. Any spare rooms now, um, the local authority won't pay housing benefit on it. Now, we've got a lot of students here at the moment. I um, was in college back in 1988. During that time, we had grants. We didn't have to take our student loans, so we had an additional funding from the government to actually sort of uh, our living expenses. Our education was free, we didn't have to pay tuition fees. We didn't have to pay for our accommodation either. We had um, housing benefit paid for our accommodation. So, I mean, what, what we now, that's 24, 26 years, um, where the students. Um, living expenses were pretty much covered all the way through the time that they were engaging in an education. That has all been taken away from you now and you've got to pay additional expenses. You've even got to pay for your course now. Was it now in college? £9,000 a year? £9,000 a year, like um, average three, four year courses? Yeah, so, so? Five. So you could be paying um, what, up to um, £45,000 for, uh, for a degree. More fair like right, okay. 15 years ago, there was a uh, sort of policy of opening up um, higher education for all, and there was a big try to encourage people from a lower demographic into education and say that it should be, uh, shouldn't necessarily be uh, advantages. Uh, I'm not referring to you in any way, like, shape, or form, but uh, it could be deemed that uh, education is almost to lead this now. So let me ask you, you, you've been to college, right? Uh, many, many years ago, and I must yes, admit, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't finish my course. It's okay, <laughs> but you took courses. Sorry? You took some courses. Yes, then. yes. So, 
you are uh, considered an alumni of that university, not an alumni who graduated, but who actually right. attended. Yes. What I'm trying to say is, uh, higher education is part of <coughs> education. Yes. With a type of higher education. Yes. Uh, things have changed. We all agree. We're not in the 80s, right? Uh, it reflects our society's values and needs, should be in a way. Yes. But you are still a member of this community. Yes, oh, absolutely, yeah. And that means that uh, those people who are our sleepers around the university is a, very, is a strong ground to say, in a humanitarian and ethical level, they are members of the community they went to school. Absolutely, You yeah. have to define what membership means. I mean, you may not be a member of the student union of the UC University, but how can you tell me that these people didn't go to school? I mean, if they went to school, some went oh, to college. Absolutely, yeah. And they are alumni of another college, they feel safe to stay around what they know. Yeah. And a lot of the, a lot of the people, um, as well as, um, okay, they might not be particularly particular students of this education, of the yes. establishment itself, yes. but they're still members of our society at the end of the day, members of but our society. But that's too general, program. you see, when yeah. you go to memberships. Right. Well, what member of the society you are, this doesn't go away just because you graduated. Yeah, that's what, what I mean. mean. Yeah, at some point they are students, so they've had an education, you, they've been learning. Form, so, as yeah. a citizen who yeah. votes, yeah. you form opinions about the education and for the generations down the line. Uh, you may find or not find a job with your degree, that's debatable. A lot of people expect that, that's an illusion. It's not a guarantee. You have hopes. But one thing is certain that you've been here, you've studied, yeah. you are part It wasn't in Cardiff, but it was it was Yes, but you're part of the educational community yeah. in this country or another country. And I think there's a government policy as well that says sort of uh, education for life as well. Yeah. So again that opportunity for education should be afforded to all people regardless of sort of social circumstances really. Um, just coming on to the sort of situation about the sort of cost of education as well, and you were saying about the opportunity of, empo of employment when uh, you've uh, finished your degree. And I don't want to be sort of too deflating on this, but I'd imagine as well that a lot of you at some point might want to own your own homes. Um, the way the sort of housing situation is at the moment with costs increasing is like affordable accommodation is very, very rare. Um, I haven't got any sort of particular figures for Cardiff, but just as a rough estimate, you're talking your minimum um, um, minimum house prices, in, or sort of average type house prices in Cardiff are probably about £100,000, maybe even a little bit higher than that. To actually get a mortgage, you actually need to, um, they will give you a mortgage of four times your um, wages. Quite often, a lot of banks will only give you three times. <coughs> so, you, so you go for uh, the mortgage company, will only give you th uh, three times your yeah, income as a mortgage. You're looking at 33 grand before you can afford a house. I don't have any jobs around there that people can access me so pretty uh, much straight away at that sort of level. Um, this could be a number of years down the line, uh, not really around, but anyway, you're going to get to afford any sort of accommodation of your own if you want your own houses. Like. Coming back to the sort of way that we can probably address uh, the sort of uh, um, this uh, sort of way that we can probably address this current situation. Um, there's perhaps ways of sort of forming a campaign, sort of ways of sort of taking direct action. I think one of the first things, um, and that seems to be this uh, done already, is actually sort of getting all the right information and make sure that you've got the right knowledge before you actually go in feet first um, and start um, giving any sort of misinformation. I think another way that you need to, uh, another thing that we can do is perhaps um, sort of engage with the sort of rough sleeper and the homeless community to sort of gain their opinions of it, um, and find out whether they would feel safer um, sleeping by a warm air vent, or would they be sort of safer sleeping in the park where it's cold and wet. Um, looking at what their needs are, looking at ways that you might be able to sort them in, pra uh, in practical ways. And one of the things that came from the Cardiff Homeless Action Campaign was. Um, uh, speaking to some homeless people that attended that meeting, um, one of the things that they said that they don't want charity. Charity doesn't solve the problem, it just maintains it, if, if anything, and uh, what they were calling for was more sort of solidarity at the end of the day. Um, there's a couple of organisations out there that um, uh, can sort of support a lot of homeless people and uh, actually sort of take, a, take this campaign forward. Cardiff Homeless Action, uh, I'm going to give a blatant plug for that one, basically. So, uh, 
obviously I'm here to represent them. Um, there's an organisation in London, I don't know if you've heard of the Focus of B15 numbers, a um, group of um, social housing tenants, a uh, group of single mothers who were in temporary accommodation in, uh, in East London. Um, their hostel was being closed down. Um, the local authority told them that, that they were uh, they had to go to Birmingham, Liverpool or Manchester to engage in housing services up there because there wasn't any housing in the local area. That's not to say that Birmingham, Manchester or Liverpool don't have their own housing crisis as well. Right? So we're just moving the problem along to another area that doesn't necessarily <coughs> solve it. What this group of mothers did, they took, their, uh, took things into their own hands and they went into, uh, there's a big estate called the Carpenters Estate in Newham and uh, there's masses of empty homes there, um, it was again part of the sort of social cohesion policy of the 2020, uh, 2012 Olympics, um, big massive housing estate left empty so they went and squatted the place. Um, they had started up pressures, they had community centres, free shops, really got the local community on board. Um, they started getting celebrity endorsement and nothing more hating, but Russell Brand was quite involved in it. But um, it, it, made, it, made, it gave them a voice. Um, they started getting national press coverage. Um, they were up in court for an eviction, and um, I think in a certain way, I mean, some people would, would fight that to the hill, but I think for their own personal campaign, in a way, I think they've done the right thing, but they actually decided in that court case to actually vacate the property. But on a platform, and this is just, even though they've had to give up that property, they're saying this is just the start of the campaign. Um, they've actually um, managed to get a petition together now to actually start uh, to try and get the mayor removed from office, and uh, he's being investigated for all sorts of uh, financial uh, um, uh, irregularities. Um, so targeting that individual directly to someone who's responsible for that uh, policy. Um, I think they, they're getting results, they've got the community on board and where they were squatting in this community, the local residents were really, really sold to leave them leave, uh, see them leave because they had built up such a positive reputation and a good report. Um, other ways that we can do it, I think like, like writing a letter and perhaps, um, I don't know, sort of laying out a set of demands of, um, of what we want to try and achieve and whether that might be to have these cages removed to put up some sort of alternative shelter, I don't know, I think that perhaps needs to be decided as a sort of community ourselves and I think these decisions need to be made as a group or community. Um, so, uh, yeah, make, uh, perhaps I'll make a list of demands and actually uh, sort of present that to um, the Dean or the Vice-Chancellor themselves and hand that in person. If you can get some sort of press campaign involved in that and pro promote it through social media. Um, yeah. uh, is there something that uh, everybody takes for <coughs> granted mm. is that uh, um, the universities are trying to uh, become stars in a system that categorizes each one from one to ten and you know right. uh, as being the most international well-established popular right, and so okay. forth so <laughs> but in, um, in those uh, categories it's like a hotel to become a one star or a five star right. uh, you need there are certain criteria Fair enough. Uh, the criteria may be totally irrelevant to you and me Right. Uh, but they are very relevant to land developers, okay. to uh, a certain type of staff, probably tenures of professors, maybe, that's a question mark there, right. and uh, all sorts of people in the government and uh, markets and so forth. It has become such a bubble right. and it has lost connection. But you can go as a, as a whole group of students through the uh, association, right? There's, there's, every school has their own um, councils right. and, and put their own um, criteria within those criteria, not different ones. That right. should be included. Okay, so you can actually define those criteria yes, yourself. Yes, redefine them. And we could perhaps have one of those criteria as that you support rough sleepers within your local community. And maybe that that might be too specific because they're a little bit broader. Right. But there, there, there could be something about social awareness and actually giving back to the community. Right, so okay. So even if you don't uh, provide shelter in that way... You can downgrade it. Yes. Okay. Um, 
So that's that's really kind of a way to go yeah. politically. Yeah, and um, people on planet do actually have like a, a list of like criteria ranking system for universities based on things like that. So environmental things are ethical, ethical like continuous engagement. But like it's got it's got its own problems. But they do have a thing for that what you're saying. But it could be improved. So maybe we can put something to think about. To, to raise it support, because support listen, right now, plans. let's be honest with ourselves, okay? Uh, a, a big majority of the international students that are here, uh, they come because they believe they will get a job in the UK, right? right? Another illusion, and uh, that uh, it gives them a higher, you know, um, a level and stand in the, in the society. It works their, uh, their, their money, and. Uh, uh, they have to pay extra fees, some don't, if they are from the EU. There are a lot of imbalances within the system, who pays who, but they look at uh, names of the professors, uh, how many people get jobs. Do, do, do any of you look at uh, what type of environment I'm in, what type of people I associate with, their values, their ideas. Do I want to have you as my boss? Do I want a boss in my life? Do I want to work for a corporate? And what kind of corporate do I want to work? There's a couple yeah. of points that you raised there. Um, <coughs> one, um, you said that sort of overseas, overseas students coming in. Mm. Um, and I think we, we can see on the news when you've got um, sort of parties like UKIP um, going on the immigration platform. I think all of the major parties now are sort of uh, that's a uh, major, major agenda at the moment. Um, now, they're talking about sort of uh, a lot of focus is around people from sort of Eastern Europe or like uh, and Britain first, but uh, having a big campaign against Roman Gypsies at the moment. Like, but then you have the mayor of Newham, who's the mayor of this social housing, uh, this uh, focus in 15 numbers. Um, he's actually sort of attending accommodation fairs in Cannes, and he's out, uh, attending one recently in, uh, in London to actually encourage. Um, foreign private investors to actually sort of invest in properties in this country. So, it's you, you're welcome if you're wealthy at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, if you're from a low social demographic, then they want to sort of close the borders to you. It's okay if you're a Russian oligarch or you're such a you oil baron. Then yeah, you can come and bring your money and move into London, bump up the house prices for the rest of the community. Um, well, that's, that's part of the wider issue. I think another thing you're saying about the sort of thing about the <coughs> system that you've got, where it's sort of like, you said it's a one to ten bank, is it? Or with stars and that? Yes, um, I mean, you can, uh, you can have representatives here from right. the council. I'm sure they're aware of the, uh, how it works. I think with any sort of direct <coughs> action campaign, one of the things you want to do is uh, you need to sort of hit an organisation where it hurts. And if you're sort of campaigning against a local business, if you can hit them financially, that's where it's going to start really sort of getting their go, yeah? Um, cost of money. Now, perhaps there's not a necessarily way to um, target the university financially. I don't know whether, they, um, whether this is a little bit sort of extreme, um, whether it's sort of a vibrant option or not, but sort of, um, sort of uh, withholding tuition fees. But if you can hurt the reputation, That's they're going to be scared of it. I've spoken to quite a few people in the university, like being different departments, and it's all about reputation <laughs> with them. Have right, you, mentioned, okay. have you mentioned anything to the Russell Group universities, the league tables? They run, they run for cover because they're like they're terrified of it. Right. So like that's that would be where. So how is like how will this issue affect like with they are part of Russell Group? It's not really just part of Russell Group. It's like. Oh, you mean like just a reputation general of the university? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can attack their reputation through some other way, of like saying yeah. they're like yeah they might be fantastic at pulling out the grades, but they're also courageously ethical, and like don't support the good love community. They you know. Then yeah. that's the way to sort of attack them like that. You can just put the media out there like that. It, it d does uh, do everybody here understand what gentrification is? Because yeah. all of this around the world are based on that fact, the return of the uh, gentry, the, yes. the big landlords, and uh, it's not only a Cardiffian phenomenon. No, it's okay. international. I, yeah. I have a strong conviction. But for Wales, I'm not sure about the England or Scotland, what they're going to do, uh, that if people really um, want to face this issue, no denials, and want to sort it out, they will. Yeah. I, I have a very strong conviction. And one of the reasons.
efficiencies than numbers. Yeah. You know, you can compare with London, right? And uh, you can also influence one another because here the, some of the relationships are a lot stronger. Yeah. And uh, people hear what their friends are saying. Yeah. And, so forth. and I think that's another thing I do. They have people hearing what their, what their friends are saying, getting the message out there. And I think like publicity is a big one that we need to uh, that can be used on this as well. We know social media is used. For, uh, we didn't have social media back in the day, but it's such an excellent platform of uh, and a, um, a method of getting out there. Um, so, um, and then there was a couple of articles on the events page from this with Facebook. So I'd like to encourage you to like just as a, uh, as a bare minimum, if you can start sort of promoting that and getting. Uh, message out there through that. Um, a couple of other ways, um, and again, and this could uh, sort of uh, suggestions for um, some sort of action, uh, direct action. Um, we've had the Occupy movement, that was a big sort of success one. And, uh, um, there's an organisation, CSOL, um, the Seattle Solidarity Federation, they do a lot of sort of work around sort of campaigning against tenants. Um, what they'll do is to go into sort of uh, landlords' offices and sort of basically sort of sit down and occupy until uh, to the landlord um, where, where tenants have had eviction notices, sit down and occupy the place until the landlord withdraws that um, that notice. Um, so we've got yeah, the cage is there and the vice chancellor's office is like just five seconds away. Right, yeah, okay. They've occupied the main lobby during a student protest before, so it's okay. quite, quite outside his office. Okay. Oh. Publicity can go with that as well, yeah. um, and sometimes doing a campaign, do it, do something fun. Um, and then perhaps everyone sort of turn up outside events with their own sleeping bags on a sort of planned day or planned time. Perhaps people coming up in, in cages or something, and uh, sort of like, okay, uh, um, rather than living on the cages, do we live in the cages? I don't know. I, I just, these are ideas I'm just sort of running off the top of my head at the end of the day. Like, but it's Halloween coming, you know? Yeah. There are many things you can use, like, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. But if you, if, again, if you can make it sort of satirical, make it a little bit fun, again, that's going to sort of encourage um, uh, sort of media interest and uh, sort of get a uh, message out to the sort of wider community and potentially damage the reputation of the university. I want well, to ask, right? has anyone felt really threatened around campus from people who sleep outside? No, and I think that's, like a, really bit, that's like, a big oh issue God, as well. No. Like, yeah. Or uh, I, I don't want to go to this university because there are people who actually sleep in the no. streets. But I think people really like think about that at all. Like, they, they don't think do. about that at all. No. See, like, there's a big gap between administration, uh, funding, and students. I'm not being funny, uh, and I don't mean to sort of, sort of tie you all with the same brush, but uh, Carla Famous Action put on a benefit gig. Uh, um, back last week out there uh, in Pate's Community Centre. And uh, me and one of uh, uh, the fellow organisers was out, uh, were outside and we were handing out uh, leaflets. Uh, a number of students walking past. And to be honest, they were so busy looking at their iPhones that uh, they weren't even paying attention to the flyers. Mm -hmm. um, now, some, when I was a student, if someone handed me a flyer, even though we had all the sort of benefits that I did as a student, if someone was handing me a flyer saying, you got a, it's a free event with free music, there's stalls, there's free food, I would have run in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, they all seem to want to sort of shy away from it, though. Like, um, and I think that's probably the same situation with the homeless people, that they're so busy looking at their screens, they don't even notice them. I think that's one of, again one of the discrimination uh, one of the sides of discrimination that homeless people feel. One of the most disenfranchising things is if someone sat in the shop doorway, that constant ignorance and that constant being ignored of people when they're walking past, um, it can be really dejecting. Just uh, I'm from engineering and it's really, really deep inside and it's very industry kind of Based and like it's really not about education anymore. Like it's always like stores of like come here and stuff. Um, and uh, I really I don't think so. Like okay, something like a front line or something. We don't do many things around that side. But maybe if we get our own different departments kind of politicised, that would be like a good start to like with flyers maybe about the homeless. Absolutely. Um. Oh, something else which is, you know, ties to everybody right now. Are you very aware and very clear of your housing rights? Sorry. Housing rights. Sorry. Rights. Rights, your housing oh, rights. Under the landlord, are you You're Under the landlord. Because uh, I made the test and nobody passed it. Right. And the students, 
made the, the people here who work at Student Union? What do you mean by all the authorities? What sort of rights are we looking at? You sort of. Uh, you need to be clear when it, you're going to any sort of exchange that includes money and right. also. Uh, notice, for, notice, notice to evict reasons to evict yes, things like that. To know yeah, why absolutely. Who is yeah. actually your landlord? Who owns the property? Yeah. And how you can defend yourself? Mm -hmm. And uh, also bargain and negotiate that rent. Mm -hmm. Just because someone asks you to pay that money, you don't go hand them the money yeah, and say yeah, thank absolutely. you. Oh, you know, you bargain. Yeah. That's another one of the deal of business. It doesn't matter where you're from. You have to learn that, you go forward in life. So, everybody wants a good deal, but there are a lot of hidden agendas in Cardiff. Yeah. Local authorities too. I have found them that very dysfunctional. Oh, absolutely. Um, a lot of that, a lot of dysfunctionality from the housing department, I think, comes through the lack of housing stock that we've got. Um, and I would not didn't envy the job of a housing worker when they're getting constant demands and uh, people constantly applying for housing and they can't necessarily find accommodation for people and um, it can be a very volatile position for them but um, uh, I think again where it comes to where the housing stock was sold off a lot of people bought their own properties and there was a bit of a housing rubble um, in the 90s where house prices, prices were rising people were then selling their council houses private landlords then buying them up. So you've got people who have the money to invest in the properties in the first place, buying masses and masses of properties, and you've got um, you've got the vast majority of properties and that held by a very, very small number of landlords. Like, um, they're creeping off millions. And they're, they're the first to uh, complain about benefit strategies, but they're the first to accept the housing benefit checks. Yeah? Um, that's no probably another issue around the, rather than the sort no of housing. There is no tenants' union. No. And I think perhaps, is that something that, um, that not just as students or as a community that we need to as do. A society for tenants. In Bristol there's organisations yeah. like ACORN, you've got uh, tenant solidarity networks in Brighton as well. So uh, yeah, these people will campaign and uh, they will sort of resist evictions and uh, sort of have uh, sort of baby resistance and things like that if it gets to that sort of stage. Sorry. Hey, uh, first of all, what you were saying with the uh, housing societies, um, we did a uh, state of account us, uh, like a group, like a research group, and um, we are going to look into bad conditions of houses in the first place, and what we want to start doing is a charter to make sure that the housing is up to scratch. Maybe what we could do, you know, following that or, or branching off is also homelessness. Mm. Um, secondly, I think we all know by now that, you know, it's a problem, but I want to start, like, as soon as possible, really thinking about problem solving. Yeah. So if we could just maybe just get us all, like, up an yeah, idea around yeah. now. Yeah. Then that'd be great. Yeah. So, like, say for the uh, the cage problem, yeah. maybe what we start doing is um, maybe like a workshop of how to sort of do like the park bench idea that they have in Canada. Right. Possibly maybe get like home base or something involved to like do a deal with like bits of wood right, or yeah. something like okay, that. Yeah, maybe like, like a fold up thing. We could maybe insert those in the cages yeah. and then they pick it up. Something like I guess that, in some sort of publicity campaign, um, yeah. I mean even some sort of like picket or have um, some sort of demonstration actually outside the cages with banners yeah. and black yeah. and things like that, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and these are more sort of practical things and it was like something I was hoping to sort of tie this up with at the end, like, I just, um, before we sort of like, uh, have we got time to sort of open this up to sort of open a forum of ways forward and that, We've like, got till like nine, but no one checks the room, so... Alright, fair enough, okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> Which one, this one is it? <laughs> um, just a couple of things, uh, just a couple of campaigns I'd uh, like to make you aware of. I mean, like I said, I mentioned Cardiff Homeless Action. Yeah. If anyone wants to come along, we've got a meeting um, uh, Monday the 3rd of November, and that's in the Gatekeeper in, uh, on Westgate Street, uh, upstairs at 7.30. You're all more than welcome to come along to that, and uh, that's a sort of ongoing direct action campaign. In, showing solidarity to homeless people. I mentioned uh, Focus C15, and there's also a local service called Coffee for Craig that actually goes out and uh, gives food to uh, homeless people. They came off the back of um, a gentleman from Manchester that came down to live in Cardiff, um, who was very, very keen to set up services for homeless people, but unfortunately died while he was living on the streets. Um, as a memorial to Craig, um, they start off in Manchester and they do sort of things like soup runs, but they're also very involved in um, uh, sort of building networks with rough sleepers 
um, linking them up so um, uh, where they wouldn't normally be able to afford a single bedroom place by themselves due to um, uh, restrictions in housing benefit. They might buddy people up so they would be able to afford like two people a two bedroom uh, property. So they're looking at very sort of practical solutions. Um, there's also food not bombs, so they give out food to homeless people as well and they, um, uh, they uh, campaign against the amount of money that our government spends on uh, weapons and arms. Um, there's billions and billions of pounds invested in the munitions trade, but yeah, very little invested in sort of uh, any um, sort of services or housing for the most vulnerable in society. Uh, they have um, uh, free food available outside Cardiff Market every Friday at 12.30. So I encourage you all to get involved in these campaigns as well, like find out where they are, come along to the meetings, um, you're more than welcome, I feel like your input will be welcome and they'd support yourselves as well in any campaigns that uh, you want to as well. Try and build sort of like big networks of solidarity. Uh, I'm in touch with the bombs and I think they are in touch with the people carrying so yes. if you do decide to do an action or something then I can ask them to come yeah. down and then people, people can also stop by because there's free food. I yeah. think there would be, there's, there's going to be, if you did decide to do an action I think like there'd be a massive support from it. I mean there's, um, uh, there's a squatting network within Cardiff as well and uh, I mean uh, you've got the red and red and black umbrella which is like a sort of community cafe. Um, uh, there are other spots in Cardiff that I won't mention where they are at the moment because of uh, the sort of uh, bit of precarious position that they are at the moment. But uh, certainly I think uh, some of the people from Red and Black would, uh, be, uh, would show their solidarity as well. Um, uh, if people aren't opposed to church involvement, I guess, by church, they want to. Um, I, I think um, the, a lot of the local churches do uh, an awful lot of work with uh, sort of supporting homeless people. Um, I know the City Temple, um, they uh, provide uh, sort of free, uh, free food, I think, on a Saturday evening. Um, they also sort of run food banks out there, they do free shops where homeless people can uh, get clothes as well. Where I work in Caffili uh, during the winter months, um, there's no direct access hospitals in Caffili at all, so if a homeless person presents in my service, I have to um, send them to Cardiff or Newport um, to, uh, to try and access a hostel. Um, but, but, um, they're very limited, they only run it between January and March, but during the sort of coldest winter months, the local churches have got together and you still have to go to housing services to access them. But they provide um, sort of warm, dry spaces for people to stay as well. So, yeah, we do more than um, any sort of support. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. groups would be more than welcome. Sure. Right? Yeah. St. Joseph's Catholic, it's day seven. So can we maybe get a list or something together of a couple of things that we plan to do and how we want to plan it? Yeah, I think we can do that. Yeah. From my point of view, I'm, I'm, yeah, thank you for giving me that opportunity. I'm sorry it's a bit, a bit disjointed and my, um, my sort of notes and it hasn't sort of flowed as well as perhaps it could have yeah, But um, I hope more than anything I'll give you a couple of ideas and uh, um, raise a little bit of awareness about the situation. Okay. So now to you to organise it and take you forward again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I really like our idea about the home base. Like trying to get yeah, like what a name as well yeah. to use. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so appropriate. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it wouldn't even be that hard to make if you could just get like plywood, a couple of hinges, and like some kind of triangle structure with maybe some kind of like raised battens and stuff. If you want wood, um, what you say, Malcolm? He's collecting wood at a place of like full. It would be like who would be the allotment. He has like a lot of scrap wood, which is building like a sort of greenhouse thing. But like, we were going to help him build that. But like, he's getting all these junk wood from places that dry and sort of standard building material you can use. So like, if we get a really sense of that, like, we can, can support that by like, bringing that around, I guess. Okay. That's yeah. what we can probably do. Maybe you can like, see it. Plus, Malcolm, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we'll see this. Yeah. I don't think you could share like, a Facebook group or something with people like right now. And then whoever want to take action, they can put that up yeah. there. So if the, this wood's just dumped in places and you can just pick it up. Okay. And see, like, some, some of the other helicopters. Hospital, you can pick it up, but uh, that's what you said. It's okay, I'll be ready for Facebook group now, and then people can just like leave their name onto the paper, and then whoever wants to get involved, and however much, mm -hmm. then just write it down here or something. Is and then, 
Facebook group for people who can Oh, we can do that on there, then, is it? And there's one about the homeless. There's, 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 there's Cardiff, Cardiff, Cardiff Homeless Action, we've got a Facebook page as well, so I'm like, Sorry. 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 Sorry.
uh, that means that in the student union building and around it, there won't be any cages and spikes oh, in the future. Yeah, which yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's future protection at the end of the day, yeah, absolutely. I don't know whether you could um, uh, sort of propose uh, with that motion as well, whether to word it rather than uh, just for the removal of the cages, but you would oppose any yeah, yeah. measures. Like, I think um, there's, there's a, like a training thing tomorrow for it, which is the first right. thing we then. I don't know when the first meeting will be, but it'll be within the next month, probably. Okay. So if we, if we, I'll, I'll write up like a model commission and then put it on the page, and I'll be good enough to look at it and right. change what I want to Is there any way we can find out uh, if it's carbon monoxide coming out of it? Yeah, we, yeah well, I'm sure we can do like a freedom of information request about that while we're yeah. there. Yeah, because mm -hmm. if they said that yeah. they have a yeah, yeah, like health and safety, yeah, exactly. You hope for if, they, if they're the same, they will actually have some evidence. Yeah. Also, if they're like, if it's poisonous and they're bringing it out yeah. to the public, that's <laughs> not. That's like, the other exactly. Issue. Yeah. Does that go exactly. against any sort of environmental or ethical uh, yeah. policy that the university might have? Yeah, right. Yeah. Say like, uh, as the environmental officer, why are you releasing carbon monoxide? Exactly. It's <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. so worried about that. Is there anyone from yeah. the social sciences department here? Huh? And in social science. Okay, good, because the social science has really raised in the rating uh, the um, university, and uh, there are uh, some very strong voices in that department about housing issues, and gentrification and so forth, that they don't come forward. And, uh, and some of these people who are not just, you know, they're like, the, even the teachers themselves should have a voice. And we're, trying to, we're trying to roll them. Yes, yeah, it's a very strong department here. I'm, I'm just surprised. Mm. Where are they? You I know? think I know a few lecturers would be on our side. It's just we have we don't ha we haven't done anything. I think we don't have any. Do we have flyers or anything like that? So I think that you, with staff, like it needs to be more like you need to get like one member of staff to go and talk to other members of staff, right. and then you need to get them into some sort of forum because I think that needs to be like because I think like just flying things. It's, Definitely, there's always quite a lot to make busy. Like, I, mean, I think you need to really like someone needs to put a lot of work into just actually making sure that they can all make it at the right time. Okay. And that, so you can make all the views sort of represented. Yeah, 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 same thing. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I just want to say that the questions about like what kind of chemicals are being emitted, what kind of levels are being yeah. looked at, like whether they need enough permission to build the cage in the first place, or things are included in the letter that I sent to the vice chancellor okay. uh, okay. yeah, in an but attempt to try and get. That information in We can do like a mass email as well, like if we get lots of people to send the same email at once. Communication yeah. traps. Yeah. 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 I send like one email from an individual perspective, but if there's like some kind of, if that's more clout, like more people yeah. actually get behind it, that might be just something with the packaging from the Facebook the page, once you've got the page up and you've got like the numbers on the page, and like I said, I'll be, um, if I can like that, and I'll invite everyone out and it's in sort of. Uh, campaigns, um, just not just locally but uh, nationally as well. Um, if they can start liking the page, get the numbers on it, that gives us a uh, good platform to work on. And then from that, you create an event of setting it at a certain time, at a certain day, and do a vast communications app on it. People have done it um, with some of the uh, organisations that were sort of selling arms to Israel with things like that, big uh, sort of communications apps mm. and things like that. So. So what would be this one page that, uh, let me say, someone who's not part of the community but would like to support you in all this can go and see all these other links? Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a Facebook page too. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, Carla Famous Action, um, we don't have a third of the gatekeeper. Are you all, are you all on the Facebook group, by the way? So you, 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 are you anyone? No, do you know? Do you have planet? No, I'm not. Okay, if you join them, like, you, can, you can advertise that group on different planets. Yeah, yeah. And that'll be like fine too. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. For the demo slash gate thing that we will probably have mm -hmm. outside, we could also have some of like a petition. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone could just like yeah. sign. Yeah, yeah. and then we can send it all to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the time is limited, you've only got sort of 10 minutes now. Would it be worth organising another meeting in the near future where we can sort of consolidate some of what we've um, I mean, like I said, I've talked a lot about sort of current situation, but if we can sort of hold another meeting where we can sort of consolidate the decisions that we've made and sort of formalise them a little bit more, um, people know exactly what their sort of responsibilities are. We can set dates for actions and things like that. Does, would that be an idea? Mm. Yeah. What's, what's 
I'd rather kind of put dates now for things that we can do in the future. Yeah. Okay. I'd be but something that I suggest, like, just tend to be the end of November. Okay. Because not much happens around at that sort of time. Okay. And also, um, like, a lot of things are reading week, and that's the body of November. So after that's finished, mm-hmm. people come back and everything, you don't have to be after that thing. So, end of November. Okay. Is, is, does everyone else agree with end of November? What did you say about reading week? Well, like reading week is the fifth week of term, that's like. Yeah. Wait, I don't know. What's reading? Electrical engineering. I didn't get one last year. What's that? I don't think it's reading. I don't know how to do the humanities courses. Yeah, it's like. Do a nine to five every day. Do a few unions at like nine. This was so fun. Yeah, I don't know if it's probably going to be good. Okay, so <coughs> when... <coughs> sorry, well, I, I just... I think it's time to... Sorry? I think it's time to, like, get things sorted. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Sorry if anyone feels that I'm rushing this. <laughs> no, 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 I think... Uh, it means what we're yeah. Like you say, it's, 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 we, we lost lots of talking and talking, we're not yeah. actually sort of planning anything, unless you've got a date, it gives us something to actually work towards. Then, yeah. Like, um, so, um, uh, November. Last Saturday in November is the 29th. Uh, mm-hmm. Last Saturday in November is the 29th, yeah. Uh, so, is that actually. when it ends, or is the 22nd any good, or is that bad? I think. Or oh. should we do it in a weekday when there's students? Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. 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 is they, it down like a value or something? Yeah, it's like just by bio bioscience, it's, um, it's just down the road. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we'd have to sort of spill out onto the corn or whatever, but you'd have to sort of sacrifice a bit of time during the afternoon or something because yeah, okay. on a Saturday, students aren't going to be up. That's they're not, not going to yeah. be around. So it's going to have to be sort of like peak time. Yeah. Um, whilst they're actually going to lectures and things like that. They could go for Wednesday, not peak time. Why not actually? Uh, Sorry? Why not actually? Yeah, no one has lectures on Wednesday afternoon to do it, but you can no. do it <laughs> previous to that. Yeah, yeah. There'll still be people on the so I'm just wondering, could we have to, um, I mean, from a personal perspective, um, and a lot of other uh, campaigns?